Here at Informatica Cloud, we recently had a customer who wanted to display inventory information coming from SAP on premises to their Salesforce users, and they wanted their Salesforce users to be able to see that data in real time. So today I'm going to show you how we were able to set that up, uh, and we were able to do a real time query into SAP, show the results. Uh, the inventory results in Salesforce. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is set up a service connector to SAP. And it turned out very helpfully this customer was able to provide a web service interface into SAP. So it was a WSDL defined SOAP service. First thing I'm going to show you is how I could set up a service connector for that. So um, let me first show you uh, what the uh, uh, WSDL looks like. I've uh, loaded the WSDL into SOAP UI. You can see I have a sample request here. So here's the sample request. It's just going to send a material number uh, over to the web service and it's going to return back several parameters about inventory. Uh, so to make that work, I'm going to first copy the sample request because I'm going to need to use it in my service connector. And then I'm going to come over to Informatica Cloud uh, real time. Uh, which we use for application integration and I'll show you a, a service connector that I'm building out. So the first thing you can see is I have an action that says let's get material information or material info. I need to set up an input to that um, a web service call. So I'm going to call it, um, uh, the input will be material number and I'll give that a label. It's text. Uh, it's a required field and the customer was able to give me um, a sample material number that would work, so it's 44545. Now one of the tricky things here is that SAP always stores material numbers as 18 character um, uh, numbers or, or, or strings. So I need to add a bunch of leading zeros to this to make it work, so I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So I added 13 leading zeros to make this work. I had to do that manually here to set up this input. Uh, with some test data. You'll see later I was able to automate that um, uh, adding uh, leading zeros, padding out the integer. So next I need to set up the binding uh, to this. So you can see there's the URL which if I go back to SOAP UI you'll see that was the URL for the endpoint uh, for the web service. Uh, I've got the username and the password that the customer provided for this uh, web service and I'm going to go type in the um, a SOAP request that we want to send. So that's just what I got from SOAP UI, the sample request. And you see here where I'm going to pass in the material number, I'm going to put in squiggly bracket dollar sign material number. And that way Informatica Cloud real time knows to use this input uh, that we've defined, the material number. And when we test it, it'll use this test material number right here. So I've entered that um, squiggly sign dollar sign uh, squiggly bracket dollar sign material number let's go ahead and test this and when I do that it fails uh, and that was to be expected because I was running this test from our cloud server in this case the customer would set up their web service so that it would only be accessible from behind their firewall so fortunately the good news here is one of our sales consultants has set up a couple of secure agents that are behind their firewall and so if I rerun the test and this time run it uh, on um, a secure agent that's behind the firewall. We should see it work, and we do. We see uh, a payload that we got back, the response payload. And you can see we have a plant, a material number, the committed date, and the quantity. And if I scroll down, we'll see the request that we actually sent, and you can see there's that uh, sample material number that we actually sent, the 44545 with the 13 leading zeros. So now if I want to pick off these um, properties uh, from the response, it's very simple. I just come over to output here and I type in the things I want to pick off. So I want to pick off uh, plant and when I type that in, Informatica Cloud real time sees that's a property in the XML response. I can put in committed uh, quantity, Q2, QTY, and that's a number. And again, uh, Informatica Cloud real time sees that that's a property. I can put in committed date uh, and that of course is a date and again we automatically get the um, property and then lastly it'll also return the material number just as confirmation that we're getting back the same thing. I'll leave that as text and again that comes straight. Uh, we, we identify that's a property 
in the XML response in the payload. So if I rerun the test again, again, I'm going to make sure I run it on a secure agent. We should see that we pick off those fields and you can see we do. Now we've got uh, plant is DC01, committed to quantity zero, etc. So things are looking good. Now, if the response were always simple like this, it were just um, one set of fields coming back, then I could use uh, the technique that I've already set up. We would be good to go. It turns out, though, if I come down and I look at this response payload in a little bit more detail, scroll down, you see I'm actually getting a series of responses back. So for each plant, I'm getting back the material number, the committed date, and the quantity. And some of these quantities, I believe, are non-zero. Yeah, down here, there's a committed quantity of 760. So uh, what I want to do here, really, rather than just getting single fields that I can work with the way I've set it up initially, I want to get back an array or a table of information. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is create a process object that will be used with this service connector. And so a process object is simply an object that contains uh, you know, a list of rows with each of these fields. So I'm going to let um, Informatica Cloud automatically generate those process objects. And it looks like we generated four envelope, body, uh, the inventory check response, and the items. And I can see those over here. You can see I've got those process objects. So now in the output section, rather than grabbing individual fields, I'm going to grab results from the process object that we've just defined. So to do that, I'm going to set up an output called item uh, list. And we're going to make that a reference to one of the process objects. In fact, the inventory check response. We're going to just make it simplified XML. And then I need to tell it that it's the inventory response um, that we are grabbing onto. OK, now let's uh, try running this again. And we'll uh, put it on the uh, secure agent and see if we get back an array of information. It looks good. It looks like we do have back an array of information here. So we should be all set to uh, now use this in Salesforce. Now that we have a service connector set up to read real-time inventory information from SAP, I'm going to show you how we can use that service connector from within Salesforce to show that real-time inventory information to Salesforce users. So first of all, I've come into the process designer from Informatica Cloud. I can actually access it through the guide designer tab in Salesforce. This is the exact same uh, process designer that you saw me using in the first part of this demonstration. Uh, this is what it looks like in you know, Informatica Cloud. This is what it looks like in Salesforce. It's using the exact same artifacts. So the first thing I'm going to do, remember we had that web services demo service connector and it had things like the input was the material number and it's going to give me as output a list of items. First thing I'm going to do is come in and set up a connection to use that service connector. So I just say give me a new connection and the name of it is going to be SAP uh, Inventory 2 and I pick the service connector to use. It's SAP Web Services Demo, the one we created previously. And I want to make sure I run this on one of the uh, secure agents behind the firewall so that we can access the uh, web service and I publish it. That's all there is to it. We now have a connection to that SAP connector, service connector we built earlier. Now I'm going to show you how we will use that um, to display data to a user. So I'm going to come over to this process guide. And a process guide can go through a series of steps, displaying information and doing work automatically for the user. And I'm going to come in. You see we just have a start and an end step. I'm going to add a step here and we'll do a service call to go off and call SAP to get real-time inventory information. So when I select the action for this service call here, I've got SAP inventory 2, get material information. This information tab tells me that I need to pass in a material number and I'll get back a list of objects. To specify the material number is a pretty simple thing in Informatica Cloud real time. I can come over to this input tab and just say I want to take the material number from a field in Salesforce. And if I go look at the product layout in Salesforce, you'll see that each product has a product code. Uh, so that's what I want to pass over to uh, 
um, SAP to get the real-time inventory information. So coming over here, I just I want a field from the product um, object in Salesforce. And I scroll down and I find uh, product code right here. And all set simple enough. So that service call right there will pass the material number to SAP and give me back the real-time inventory information in the form of an object, which is an array of fields, or you can think of it as a table with a lot of rows. Now, one problem, as I mentioned earlier, SAP is expecting this product code to be uh, padded with enough leading zeros to make 18 characters. In this case, it's a six-character product code. The example we showed when we built the service connector was a five-character product code. So we need to pad this with enough leading zeros. Fortunately, there was an Informatica cloud a developer who built a little utility for me to do that. So the way I have this set up right now would not work because we would be passing in a product code without the number of leading zeros. What I'm going to do is insert another step here. I'm going to make this a process call and the Informatica Cloud developer who was nice enough to build me a, a little sub process called it a pad integer. And if we look at that, we can see that I can pass in an integer uh, which needs to be padded with leading zeros. And I tell it the total length and it will return back um, a padded integer. So to make this work, I'm going to set up an input for the integer and input for the total length. The integer that we want to pass in is that product code that we just talked about. Uh, so I'll grab the product code off of the product object simple enough and then the total length is 18 that's the total length that we want and we're all set I now have a, a sub process that'll take any length um, uh, uh, number and pad it with enough leading zeros to get 18 by the way this is a sub process if I click this plus button over here it'll open up and show me what the sub process looks like it's actually very simple it's just doing an X query calculation on the input and if I show it to you, here's what that xQuery code looks like. So just using standard xQuery to pad the integer. All right, so coming back over, we are all set now. Uh, we've got a padded integer coming back. So rather than using the raw product code, which I was using before, I now want to change this and use the field padded integer, which is down here. It's uh, available to me to use and that's all good and then the last thing we want to do is just display the information to display the data we want to put a screen step into this process guide uh, so we can show the user the real-time information and now I can um, just configure this screen I can say here is the inventory information from SAP and I can drop in a field a read-only field I want to, of course put in the item list and then grab the list of items. I can open that guy up and tell it which fields to display. So we want to show the plant, the committed date, and then the committed quantity, just like that. And we'll say OK. Uh, I can drop in an icon. I just pasted that in. This is a full HTML editor, so you have a lot of flexibility on designing the layout. Here's what it's going to look like. That looks good. So I will now uh, just say go on. Uh, to finish this thing out save it and publish it and we should now have a guide it only has one screen on it but we should have a guide in Salesforce that's going to um, display inf inventory information from a product screen when I come over to the product screen I can open up the process guides tab uh, section and I see that I have this SAP inventory demo guide that's the one we just created and when I run it it's of course padding the integer from the product code up here it's going off and querying SAP and it comes back with a list of results uh, so it looks like that all worked we have our little SAP logo everything's working nicely here now the way that we did this for the customer they didn't want to have the user have to click open a section like this and run a guide instead they wanted to have it so the SAP inventory would load automatically every time you load a product page and that's very easy to do I've put a section here on my Salesforce layout page layout that automatically runs a guide that gets the inventory and displays it and I can do that I can click into some other uh, products and you'll see every time we do that it's automatically uh, put in there anytime you click update it's automatically updated it just comes back and updates the inventory information I'll use this soft test uh, soft touch test product 
do just one more example you can see it automatically loads in inventory you can also uh, run these guys from a button and some customers like that this particular customer like this format where you automatically show the inventory but if I click, ran it from a button again you're just running a guide it runs the same guide and shows you the same inventory information so um, that's an example of using that service connector we built to bring in real-time SAP inventory information and just displaying it. You might also want to have a process you go through. For instance, you might actually want to have the user come through and then if the inventory level is zero, like at this plant, you might say, hey, uh, the committed inventory is zero. Do you want to send an email message to the plant manager? If we say yes, it automatically fills in the recipient based on user settings in Salesforce. You've got a, a subject ma uh, on your email that automatically says what um, product code you're inquiring about. This message defaults to just a sort of generic message, but um, hope the uh, Patriots uh, do well this year, something like that. You can customize the message. And when you send it, that gets logged to Salesforce. It, of course, goes to the plant manager, and they can respond back with information. Here's another example of uh, something you might want to do. Uh, as with a process where you're including um, SAP real-time information you might want to go from a contact and say you want to start a new opportunity the first thing you might do is check SAP inventory and of course since we're starting from a contact we don't know what product uh, to check on so it's prompting the user to put in uh, a partial name of a product we put in soft touch it's doing a search on all of the product names in Salesforce there's a whole product section as you saw in Salesforce and if we look at this list there's actually uh, 87 different products that match that soft touch we might want to filter that down some more I could use this box here and say show me just the soft touch test and that gives me just one result And I say great let's use that now we go check the SAP inventory information from various plants I can pick this plant right here and say, um, let's use plant DC01. And now um, the process guide goes and checks and says, okay, committed quantities greater than zero, you're okay, you can create an opportunity. When you do that, it automatically creates an opportunity name based on the product code, prompts you to fill out a um, stage uh, for the opportunity it defaults the close date to something 30 days out but we can go and modify that and it knows what the product of interest is uh, next it's going to ask you to reconfirm a few things you know what's the next step call to make sure they will place the order uh, it'll let you modify the close date we're going to put it out to the end of january now and then it lets you do things like um, enter the new market. And by the way, these are dependent pick lists. So when I pick consumer and industrial, we get these options come up based on the dependent pick list. If I picked other things, you would see other things uh, in, in the pick list. So let's go with blends, industrial. I'm going to update all of that. This is actually going to create the product on the opportunity and fill in all those fields. And when I click go to create an opportunity, we'll see we've got the opportunity created associated with the right account name. We've got the right profit center and market. Again, those were dependent pick lists. We've got the product of interest in here. We've got the next step, the close date that we specified. And if I come down, we've even created a, a an associated item, a, a related item, which is the product on the opportunity, all done automatically. So in summary, you've seen here how you can create a service connector to get real-time information from SAP in this case inventory information it's actually an array of information coming back so it's inventory information by plant and then we've shown you how you can display that in real time to Salesforce users in a variety of formats you can have it automatically pop up every time a product page is loaded you can run it from a button and then we also showed you how you can use it in some processes where maybe you want to send email uh, to a plant manager and that email is a template is automatically created for you or maybe you even want to use it in the uh, process of creating an opportunity ensuring that a user only creates opportunities for products that are in inventory and then doing a lot of the work to help the user fill out that opportunity screen these were all designed in the informatica cloud process designer hope this has been useful thanks for watching